If you've ever written CSS before in your life, then you've probably heard of SAS. And in case you haven't, SAS is basically the version of CSS that you've always wanted. So CSS has always been a little bit of an issue to work in. I'm sure everybody who's written CSS before knows that. But SAS makes things a lot easier by introducing things like variables. So now you can declare a variable once and use it all across your document. So if you want to do something like change one color, you don't have to do a mass find and replace just to do that. Another useful feature is nesting. So you can nest CSS selectors inside each other. So if you want to target anchor tags inside list tags, inside UL tags, inside nav tags, inside a header tag, you can be that specific if you want. You can also kind of reuse parts of your code throughout your document with mixins. So you only need to write this snippet once and then you can kind of reuse it across your document using include. And if you want to compile this SCSS code into just normal CSS that your browser can read because your browser cannot read this, then you would just install SAS with NPM and then run something like SAS and then your input file and then your output file. So this is what all of this compiles down into. And so I'm sure you can see that working in SAS is much more appealing than working in just CSS because it has lots more features. And so over the years, I have used SAS a lot in all different kinds of projects. But these days, I really never use SAS anymore. And at least in my personal projects, I always just use vanilla CSS over SAS. And of course, it's totally fine to use SAS. I don't really have a problem with it. And if you want to continue using it, then go ahead. But in this video, I just kind of wanted to explain why I personally don't use SAS anymore and why you might not want to as well. So let me just explain why. Let's go back here. And one of the biggest reasons why I don't use SAS anymore is just because CSS has come a long way since it was first introduced. So I guess that we kind of have SAS to think for a lot of these changes. But since SAS was introduced, CSS has added a lot of new features. Specifically, they've added their own implementation of variables. They're not quite variables. They call them CSS custom properties, but they work essentially the same as these variables right here. So the syntax is a little bit different, but what I can do is I can put these in the root element. And then if I wanted to add a variable for font primary, I can just write this like this. And so this right here is essentially the same as this variable up here. And now I can replace this down here instead of this SAS variable. I can replace it with this syntax right here, font primary. And then this will function exactly the same as the SAS variable. And as a matter of fact, I can just replace all of these variables with CSS custom properties. And so I don't really need these SAS variables anymore. So that is one reason why you might not want to use SAS just because some of these are already in CSS now. Also, some things like maybe doing math inside your CSS. Previously, this wasn't possible and it was only possible with SAS. But now I can do some calculations with the calc function and I can do something like 100% minus 20 pixels. So these are the kinds of things that you can do with CSS now. Now, I can't talk about SAS without talking about nesting. So this is probably one of the biggest features that a lot of people love about SAS. Just the fact that you can nest these selectors inside of other selectors. And it definitely makes things a lot easier to write. And you don't have to do so much typing. For example, if you wanted to do all of this in just normal CSS, you would have type header, nav, ul, li, a. That is definitely a mouthful. And I understand why people would prefer to write it like this. Now, native CSS nesting is actually a feature that is coming to CSS soon but it's not all the way there yet. As you can see here, it is available in the latest Chromium, Edge, and Safari, but is not currently available in any version of Firefox. So maybe in the future you will be able to use this and it will just natively work. But at least for right now, if you want to use nesting and have it work everywhere, then you will have to do it the SAS way. But the issue is, I don't even really recommend nesting most of the time. Most of the time, it is going to be the wrong tool for the job. So the issue here is how CSS actually parses these. But as you can see here, SAS just compiles this to this selector right here. And the issue is that CSS actually reads things from right to left. And so whenever your browser is parsing this document, first it will go over every single A tag. 
So this is going to be every anchor tag on your web page. And depending on the size of your website, this could be a lot. This could be hundreds of A tags that it's having to search through. And after it gets all of the A tags, it then filters it down to all of the A tags that are in a list item, which can still be a lot. It then filters it down to all of the ones that are in a UL tag. It then filters it to all the ones that are in a nav. It then filters it to all the ones that are in a header. And so you can see why this might be a bit of a performance problem. Because if you have a lot of these elements on your page, then it can really slow things down as it essentially has to do a whole bunch of different round trips just to parse this one selector here. And another issue with writing your selectors like this is they are not very reusable. So here I have a nav element nested inside my header. But the problem is, what if I want to use my nav element somewhere else, like in my footer? Well, it's just not going to get styled because this only covers nav elements in the header. And none of these styles are really very reusable because I can only use all of these inside of the header. And if I want to take them out or put them in any other context, it is just not going to work. So that's why I don't really prefer to write my CSS like this. I would actually probably refactor this to something like this. Let me uncomment this out. But I would just write this without all of the nesting. So I would rewrite the anchor tags as just navigation link. And then in the HTML, I would just give them the class of this. And I would just rewrite the HTML to give all of these their own class name. And then it will be much easier to reuse these elements in different parts of my HTML. And in my opinion, I even think this is easier to read a lot of the time than some of these nested elements, because if you're working on more complex websites, then you will definitely see some giant nesting going on. And once they start to get to be too big, they are just a little bit too difficult to read. And so that's why I don't really miss nesting in my CSS, just because a lot of the time that you use nesting, it can kind of be a bad practice. And yes, sometimes you have to do a little bit more typing out of all of these class names, as opposed to if you had done it with nesting, but I don't really think that it's a huge sacrifice to make. And a lot of the other features of SAS, like mixins, I don't really think that they're all that. So previously mixins were very useful because you could do things like this. So before, if you actually wanted to use border radius as a CSS property, then you would have to also prefix it with WebKit to make it work in some browsers. But these days with modern browsers, you don't really need to do that for many CSS properties. I have a whole other video on why I don't use vendor prefixes anymore, but they're kind of just a thing of the past, at least for my use case. And so that's what most people use mixins for, to be honest. And if you are using mixins a whole lot and kind of using them as code snippets to reuse in different parts of your CSS, you might want to just consider making them a utility class. Like instead of using a mixin to center your element, you could just turn it into a utility class and then put it into your HTML. And at least for me, these days when I'm running CSS, I don't miss anything from SAS. The only inconvenience, I guess, would be sometimes I have to do a little bit more typing, but it's really not that much of a sacrifice. And in my opinion, the reduced complexity from not having to use SAS makes it worth it, in my opinion. I know setting up SAS is not super complicated or anything, but in my opinion, the less moving parts, the better. Now, I do have to give credit where credit is due because a lot of this wouldn't be possible without SAS. If SAS never came around, then we probably wouldn't have these native CSS variables like we do now. So it's always important to respect your elders. But these days, I just don't really feel like it's necessary for most projects. So for small to medium sized websites, I would just use vanilla CSS. And that is what I have been using for a long time. But even for larger, more complex projects, like maybe, for example, a web application, I still wouldn't reach for SAS. I usually use something else like post CSS, because even for these use cases, SAS is usually not the best tool for the job. And so that's why I haven't used SAS for a long time now, personally. And in my opinion, the simpler option is usually the better option. Not always, but in this case, I think it is. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you still use SAS all the time, tell me what features that you still use. But as for me, I'll just be enjoying myself over here in my plain old vanilla CSS.